Breakfast television comes a step closer tomorrow. That's the deadline for both contenders to present their submissions on programming and finance to the Broadcasting Tribunal. The two competitors bidding for the daily five-hour slot are Northern Television and City Television. Northern's bigger than City, but City argues that Northern should be kept out of television because it's owned by newspapers. In August, the Broadcasting Tribunal will begin hearings to decide who gets the slot from 6.30 to 11.30 a.m., seven days a week. In the meantime, the lobbying continues, as Rob Harley reports. Very soon, the waiting will be over. The development we've only dared to dream about will be here. The answer to those early morning blues. The ideal way to fill in all of that spare time you've got before work. For that time of the day when your mind is a veritable sponge, just yearning to soak up meaningful information. Ladies and gentlemen, for your entertainment, please welcome Morning Television. As yet, we're not too sure what it's going to be like, but the format adopted by the Australians, Americans, and more recently the British, seems to be pretty uniform. Across the Tasman, Aussies have a choice between the nine networks today show or Good Morning Australia on Channel 10. Good morning, Australia. It's Thursday, June 23rd. I'm Gordon Elliott. And I'm Kerri Ann Wright. Good it's a mix of chat, comment, Southern magazine items, current affairs, with news and weather on the half hour. The only trouble is, with all or any of the breakfast shows abroad, despite all the hard work, very few people watch. Audiences are only a small fraction of what evening shows attract. Not only will the successful tenderer for our morning time have to put out and sell a breakfast program, they'll have to try and attract another audience in an equally difficult time zone. 9 a.m. till 11.30. Over at Northern Television, the Goliath of the two contenders for the morning warrant, they're confidently predicting that not only will they get the nod, but also they'll be able to mount a package of programs that'll attract enough of the toast and cornflakes market to make a buck. The atmosphere here at Northern is almost a little nervous. Here they are with all this gear and all these staff, rather like the support crew for a big racing car, hoping desperately for a chance to do more than just run their machine round the block. But the question has to be asked. What will happen to this multi-million dollar investment if Northern Television doesn't get this desperately needed break? Well, at this stage, of course, all our efforts are going into making sure that we don't miss out. And uh, we have not thought no further than getting the warrant. Indeed, Graham Douglas and the team at Northern found defeat unthinkable as they were putting the finishing touches to their submissions this week. Unthinkable because it would doubtless represent a major setback in their attempts to get their studios and equipment working to their designed level. Northern's first limited attempt to show its stuff in the hour-long 11 to 12 slot met with some success, but hardly received a rave review. This year's offering, the 11 a.m. program, did one 13-week series, and then in a somewhat surprise announcement several weeks ago, Northern scrapped plans for a second lot. Last Friday's final program gave the official version of why. Good morning and welcome to the 62nd and final 11 a.m. program. Northern is closing the show so that they can devote all their energies to planning the five hours of television time for which they've applied and which we hope you'll be able to enjoy at the end of the year. So this However, Eyewitness News really understands that hefty above-the-line costs in making this program were much of the reason why 11am Part 2 was canned. National Business Review journalist Warren Main has been following closely the fortunes of both contenders for the morning warrant. Are Wilson and Horton starting to bleed a bit financially, do you think, with their northern operation? Well, put it this way, they're not telling me, but they've got to be, for two reasons. One, they've been running for 18 months, first good morning and 11 a.m. in uh, a most uh, off-peak period, getting about 2 to 3 percent of the audience. Now, even if you're going on for an hour a day, it doesn't matter whether you're going on an hour or eight hours a day, you, certain have, you have certain basic costs there. Secondly, they uh, have got part of their political clout from having uh, an association with newspapers from Wangarei through to Invercargill. Now, a lot of these provincial newspapers are not used to pouring in big bickies into speculative scre uh, schemes, and I would think that they would like to see some instant return on their money. So, Within the last couple of weeks, Northern executives have taken some of their anxieties to Wellington. They've been seeking assurances from the government that they'll get more than just a chance at the morning slot. They still want a third regional channel system, starting in Auckland, then spreading to other centres. As yet, the government's given no firm public commitment, so Northern have to be hoping for this morning leg in the door. 
Across town, the buttons are being pushed equally hard at City Television, the other contender for the morning warrant. City TV has its roots here in the Auckland studios of the Video Workshop, a commercial video production house, with sister companies Genesis Sound and Video Concept in Wellington. The two brains behind this operation are John Powell and Andy Tyler. Powell has a background in advertising. He's worked with Radio New Zealand. Tyler has had a number of jobs in television here and overseas. Andy Tyler launched Video Workshop several years ago and believes his instinct for survival and what's now becoming a very competitive business is telling him that City Television is in with a chance. Andy Tyler says it would be wrong for anyone to write off his company's chances just on the basis of comparative size with Northern's big operation. This really has been a big problem. People haven't seen our commitment. We've been in the television industry for nine years. Our facilities, although they're spread between two centres, between Auckland and Wellington, in total terms probably equate quite well with what Northern have done. Do you go into this warrant battle very hopeful or only mildly optimistic? Uh, extremely optimistic. I think it's ironic that, um, that we should have started off as outsiders and, and we would rate ourselves as the favourite now. There's been one unanswered question about city television. Where's the money coming from? Up till late today, City had been keeping everyone guessing. But just a few hours ago, Andy Tyler announced they'll be going public, offering shares in City Television to raise working capital. So, let battle commence. Northern will be stressing quality of facilities, good financial backing, and a proven track record with the 11am show. City TV will say, we've been around longer, and also will be telling the tribunal that the Northern Television Consortium of newspaper publishers have enough influence in the media already and will urge that so-called cross-media monopolies are undesirable. I think it, it is probably the most crucial point that the tribunal has to consider because, uh, the, uh, as I've said previously, the overseas experience would point to the fact that it is not a good thing and, and that it has been recognised as not being a good thing by governments out, uh, overseas. Uh, um, I feel strongly that the talents you require to make television programmes are very different from newspapers. Uh, I seem to remember the editor of the Herald, in fact, coming out with that point himself, that, that what makes a good television journalist doesn't make a good newspaper journalist. Northern's Graham Douglas rejects the suggestion that his company would get too much media influence in obtaining the morning warrant. Well, we see it, of course, as an effort to divert the uh, attention away from the real issues. Uh, the issues are who is actually going to provide the best programming and who's best capable of providing the best programming during that morning time. Uh, the company has a very broad base of 16 companies publishing 18 daily newspapers between Rongerain and Bacargill. Some of those are very big public companies with a very large public shareholding. Uh, there is only one monopoly in broadcasting and that's state owned. And of course, uh, this morning time, of course, will help break that big state monopoly. Yes, and finally, we asked Warren Main, is it a one-horse race for Northern, or does City have a chance? Well, my feeling is that everything that, that is, is, is cynical about me in thinking that big business always gets its way and leans on politicians and does things through the back door would say, go for Northern television. But you've got to remember that we have a broadcasting tribunal headed by a fellow called Bruce Slane, who, when he gets away from his lawyers, is his problems there is a straight down the barrel honest honest man who whose track record says you know look at the merits of the case to hell with it and I think City Television has coming in late has started to show some entrepreneurial uh, traits there that I'd say it's a two horse race and I know that's uh, that's not the answer you wanted but that's the best I can give you at this stage. Rob Harley with that report and the decision on who does get to run breakfast TV is expected towards the end of August. And that's our news roundup. Next, the shape of television to come. First details of what we can expect to see on private television's planned breakfast show were released tonight. Both challenges for the morning slot, City and Northern Television, have made their submissions to the Broadcasting Tribunal public. The tribunals due to hear their competing, co competing claims for the warrant at the beginning of August. Whoever gets the tribunals go-ahead could be beaming their program out to breakfast viewers by November. Bill Ralston has the details. If you don't mind munching your cornflakes while someone tells you all about the world's problems, then the chances are you could become a big fan of morning television. Both the Wilson and Horton-backed Northern Television and City TV have planned a healthy diet of news and current affairs, liberally spiced with a bit of entertainment. Here's what Northern would put on. Kicking off at six in the morning for the early birds with news, weather and keep fit classes. 
there's a 25-minute comedy slot planned and a five-minute news program that will snap, crackle and pop every quarter of an hour. From seven to eight, news, weather and sports bulletins alternate with a few current affairs style interviews and a newspaper summary a la radio's morning report. It's much the same between seven and nine, perhaps a little softer in content catering for the declining number of hard news addicts who'll probably have headed off to work. After nine, the housewives slot, it appears solid soap with a quick 9.30 duck out for a news brief and a preschooler spot. That's Northern's rundown. With City, it's a similar story. Take a typical Monday, news headlines at six, lots of kids stuff from six to eight, from seven till nine, a news magazine. After nine, the soap's diluted with some preschooler entertainment and even a movie twice a week, or else a mid-morning game show. The National Business Review's television commentator and pundit Warren Main has just read the submissions. It's exactly the sort of formula that they need. Are people going to watch it? Well, overseas experience in Britain has uh, tended to, to, be, uh, uh, to suggest that they, the people aren't watching it there. In the States it's well established, in Australia it's well established. There's always going to be a relative minority interest. The question is, uh, can they get the kids to turn on the sets uh, the same way as television in New Zealand puts kid old programs at 6.30 against the 6.30 news for two? Uh, the real problem in it is that they're going to get about three or four percent of the audience. It appears that Northern is still committed to its regional, t t its regional third channel and it wants to say that there's no money in morning television. City have seemed to have accepted that they will make a go of it. It's touch and go. As I say, you haven't got the benefit that television New Zealand has of the lucrative nighttime hours to offset your losses against. But what's it going to be, quality or pulp? Oh, it's a little bit of both, really. The, uh, the political mood is for a news-type program, a morning report uh, with pictures, if you, if you want to put it that way, at breakfast time, and for housewife entertainment, uh, in the, it, which is in, invariably soap operas. Uh, uh, it's as good as you can expect, bearing in mind that it's a minimal uh, profit-making area. But is there any money in morning television? Well, not to begin with, according to both the companies making the bids. Northern's budgeted for a two and a quarter million dollar loss in their first year, and City's talking about losing some one and a half million dollars in the same period. But those kind of losses won't continue, they say. Northern expects its losses to be down to half a million by the end of their third year of operation, and City is even more optimistic. They're talking about a two million dollar profit by the end of their second year. Now, last week when we asked you this, you sat on the fence a bit. Uh, who's going to win? Well, I'm going to sit on the fence again, but things have clarified, Bill. Uh, the programming is much of a muchness, from, so the issue is obviously going to be decided on other criteria. Now, on one hand, you have the strike against Northern, which is cross-media ownership, the, uh, the newspapers owning morning television. Now, against city television, you've got the fact that they haven't uh, come up with... Uh, a one big financial backer. They've talked about going out for a two and a half million float. A two horse race still there? Oh, most definitely a two horse race. That race is fast tracked for a quick three day hearing coming up on August 2nd. If Northern gets the warrant, the balloon should go up on February 20th. City aren't saying when they'd go to air, but I think the wise money would be.